guys, this is Tom from Horizon Hobby and Spectrum RC here to talk to you about a battery checker. Not just any checker, this is the Spectrum Smart Checker. It is a smart checker that is for batteries, of course. It's for your smart batteries and more. So let's go through all the cool new features and how to use them on this video. If you guys have any comments, go ahead and let it leave them below. Okay guys, we're down on my bench here and I'm gonna go through all the different really cool features that are in the new Spectrum Smart Checker. It is the XBC100. This is the smart checker that we're talking about here today. And let's go ahead and plug in a smart battery. Yes, okay, so it is a smart checker. It is for smart batteries, but it also works for any other battery and we'll kind of go over that. But first, let's just see what happens when we plug in our smart checker with a smart battery. So first thing we see, is here we've got the main screen so it kind of gives us an at a glance and it's a little bright so let's go see if we can't turn down the brightness for our camera here all right backlight is at middle let's turn it down to low that's that's better all right so that's one cool function is you can change the backlight on it so if it's a uh, really sunny day you can turn it up or if it's uh, too dark or you're doing something like this and you're trying to shoot a video you can turn it down you can change the volume you have some system information, hardware, whatnot, and the alarm type. So if it uh, over discharges, uh, or if you have a battery that's really low, it'll repeat our battery type. It already knows what battery we've got plugged into it. So we say smart lipo and all that good stuff. You guys can see this that we have all these different features, really cool stuff that we'll go through. So we've got the battery plugged in here. We can see that we have a essentially a fuel gauge, 92%, and then you got a little bar here that will deplete as the battery gets lower. You've got the main pack's voltage and the battery's internal temperature. So uh, if you aren't familiar, smart batteries, the Spectrum smart batteries has a little chip in it and all the magic gets transmitted to your smart checker or your smart charger through this wire, okay? And then it got a little pin there. So that uh, will store information like the number of cycles, number of times it's been charged, the number of times it's been over discharged or overcharged uh, or even overheated. And I'll kind of show you where those icons are at on the screen. So let's go ahead and let's plug in my two cell here just to see a difference. Give it a second. All right, so it shows us uh, the two cell voltages there. So they're at kind of a storage voltage. So what can we do with a smart battery? What's different? Well, uh, if we press and hold this button here, and as you guys can see, um, these icons here, they may have, they're gonna move over. This is a pre-production unit, the one I have. I've been using it a lot, as you can see, it's kind of scratched up. But uh, the uh, arrows will be on top of these buttons. It is a touch interface. So press and hold and then I'll go to the smart menu, okay? So this battery, the audio auto storage has been turned off. You could turn that on if you like, right here. I like to set mine to about 72 hours, about three, just about three days. All right. So if I leave it fully charged and I forget to uh, discharge it, it's gonna start putting a load on the battery to discharge it down to a safe level, a good storage level. You can change what the charge current is, you can change what the storage voltages and you can change what your charge voltage is now it's not going to let you go above 4.2 that'd be a question that you ask it will not all right and then exception record if there is an exception with the battery and what that means is if there was an event that uh, caused it to over discharge or over uh, heat uh, overcharge things like that it will be displayed here okay so da, da, da. we'll go back to the main screen so we're looking at the main screen. We've got the cell voltage. All that data is getting transmitted through that smart line. If we tap down, it'll give us even more information about the battery. The battery is a LiPo. It's a two cell. It's a smart spectrum smart battery. 5,000 milliamps. It has a 3C charge rate and a 30C discharge rate. And you'll see the number of cycles there. It's all never been used. Uh, and the number of charge or over discharges or overcharges, that's what that one means, over discharges, and then the number of times it's been overheated, which of course is none because it's never been used. Brand new pack. All right, let's look at the other one. You can kind of see what those will say on this guy. This guy's I've, I've been running in my Night Radian. Good battery for the Night Radian. So go down, and you can see it's got, uh, well, maybe not this one, but I've used it once. It's got one discharge on it or one cycle. So that's a pretty simple guy. That's probably the main thing that you're gonna look for is to see, see how many cycles has been on the pack and then to see what your balance is at. Okay, so 
And like I said, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate what other batteries you can plug into it. Pretty much anything. There, uh, I can't say that there is a battery that is not compatible with the Spectrum Smart Checker. Like, we've got a simple two cell receiver pack. If you want to just plug in the main lead and see what the main voltage is, you take it into the cell balance port there. You can see that. We've got the, it can ha handle up to eight different cells, an eight cell battery. We plug it into the first one, just designated where the uh, negative is. So, plug it in like that, it boots up, and it tells us that we're at 7.92 or so, somewhere around there, so. Uh, or if we wanna just plug in the balance connector, of course we can do that. It boots up, shows us what the cell, uh, uh, cell voltages are, and it shows us what the level of the battery is. Pretty simple, but just like any other battery checker. And, and this is where we can change uh, different things like what it thinks the battery type is. Now, it'll guess, yeah, but you could say that it's a life or lithium or LIHB, things like that. So let's move on to the next thing. Uh, one cool feature that this guy has, and I use a lot, is it supports, uh, it has a USB port on the side for powering USB devices. So if you need to uh, charge your phone or your Bluetooth speaker or your iX12 at the field or your DX6R at the field, you can plug it in there. It is a USB Qualcomm 3.0 supported device, so it can do fast charging, which is pretty cool. It charges my phone in about an hour and a half, which is pretty cool. I like that a lot. Um, to do that, we don't have to have a smart battery. We can plug in any old battery. Uh, we can plug in, like I've got a six cell here. We can plug in an EC3 into the IC3 connector. And then we hit enter, and we can hit start. So it goes to this new screen here. This is just the time that it's been in USB charge mode. This is the voltage that it's putting out. That may go up and down depending on the device. The amperage that it's putting down out, once again, depends on the device and things like that. All right, next cool feature is, oh, let's skip over servo test. That's one of my favorites, is cell balance mode. So let's say we got a pack that's really out of balance. I think, let's see what this guy's at. Go back. And not terrible, but we can look here and hit start cell balance and it'll start discharging the cells and balancing the cells out for you. So if you uh, need to tender some, tend to some batteries, this is a good way to do that with your Spectrum Smart Checker. All right, all right. And the piece de resistance, one of the coolest things is servo test mode. So this is a servo driver. This allows you to hook up to um, your, your buggy or whatnot that you need to try to get the endpoints right on uh, without having to hook it up to your radio system and you just need to quickly power something on. Like uh, if you're building a big plane, this is a really good way to get uh, your setup going without having to plug in your radio system. Uh, such as, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a uh, Carbon Cub 60cc wing and you guys can see the different things that we can do with that. All right. All right, so we've got a Carbon Cub wing here. So what I would like to do with my Carbon Cub, or really this is Steve's Carbon Cub, uh, is hook up the aileron servo and test its limits to see you know, how much amperage we're pulling and the throws that we can obtain, and really if we just need to center the servo. It's a really cool tool to use with your Spectrum Smart Checker that I've got plugged in here. It's not going to put too much voltage into your servo, just a standard kind of five volt servo uh, output for that. And we'll go ahead and plug that in. We'll kind of zoom in here. Another cool thing about the, uh, the output driver here on the uh, side here is that you can use that on ESCs too if you need to change some settings on an ESC. So that's pretty cool. And we've got a lot of wing here I'm working with. I guess I could have picked with a smaller wing. Let's, uh, let's do this. So plug in your servo into this port here. So we see this got uh, a servo sec checker port or a servo tester port, there's a negative, a positive, and a signal, and then a little notch if it's got uh, one of them, those funny little doohacky uh, keys on there. And plug it in, tap the center button, and we'll go down to servo test. Uh, you guys might notice that there are two servo test menu here. So one is for uh, your everyday servo, which is the 15, 20 second millisecond center rating, okay? And then the second one down is 760, that is for heli uh, tail servos. So heli tail, tail servos run at a different uh, resolution, uh, so to say, 
than your standard everyday digital servos or analog servos. Yeah, you don't have to use it with digital servos. It can be analog as well, works with any servo. All right, so once we're in servo test mode, you're gonna see a few things that uh, are on this screen here. You've got an up and down, which is adjust position, as you can see here. And then we go up and down. And then you got fixed position. So if you tap it once, it's gonna go to those extents. So be careful going to those extents. It is gonna go to the furthest extreme. So if your servo is a, a pretty powerful servo or you're not 100% you know, what the extents that it can reach are at, careful with that. This wing's already been set up, but you can kind of see what's happening once. Oh, this is a fast servo. Uh, it's going to go to the max. And then if we tap it again, it's gonna go mid and then the max the other way. So you see this little number here on the right or the left hand side, this number on the left hand side. That is the amperage that the servo is literally pulling through the, the checker here, the tester. And the, the amperage right now is 578 MA, that's milliamperage. So it's about half an amp. You, know, you, you gotta take the decimal point up if you wanna make it an amp. So let's go uh, to the other end. Oof, so now it's pulling about 1.5 amps, so 1.1564 uh, milliamps. So that's the full extent that way, all right? So if I were setting up a plane or a truck or a buggy, I would literally just kind of hold this button and it's gonna slowly move the servo. And I'm gonna do it until I start to hear it kind of bind up. All right, so that's the extent that it goes. That's pretty far, that's good. And then if you tap it, it'll go back to center. So we just kind of tap it once, Oof. and it'll go back to center, all right. I'm gonna have to iron up his wing and clean it up after I uh, get through here. All right, one last thing that you can do that's outlined by these double dots here is if you double tap it, it'll start cycling the servo back and forth or up and down, just like that. So you can kind of test its range and see, okay, if I'm going all the way down like this, we see that it's hitting about 200 milliamps. Oh, it's not too bad. I think this servo's doing quite well. And if we tap, it'll go back to center. And if we want to exit, you just press and hold, outlined by that longer bar there. So that's one of the coolest features of the uh, Spectrum Smart Checker that I really think is uh, a very valuable feature on here. You can get checkers for real cheap that just have like a little dial on it, but this guy's got a digital display. It tells you the amperage that it's pulling from it. The price of this is really quite uh, minimal when you consider that it's a really high-end battery checker built in with a servo tester and it has a USB power out for charging your USB devices. Really cool stuff here. All right, let's, uh, let's give Steve his wing back. All right, so that's about everything that the uh, Smart Checker can do right now. But one really cool feature about the Smart Checker is that it will have updates. If we find that there are any other features that we want to add to it, or if there's any bugs that we want to change, or whatever, you can update it using a USB cable, uh, micro USB straight to the side there, and we could add features to it later. Another great feature, really value added uh, proposition for you there with the Smart Checker. So if you guys have any questions about the Spectrum Smart Checker or everything Spectrum or Smart related, go ahead and hit us up in the comments below or hit us up on Facebook Messenger. We're happy to answer your questions. Make sure to like and subscribe to this video and stay tuned for more Tech Talk videos about Smart and Horizon Hobby products.